Hey, good morning VLA family. I hope you all have someplace cool to wait out this heat wave. Uh, we are going to get going on our unicorn essay this morning. We're going to be working a little bit on how to uh, develop our rough draft further using the outline and the information we have compiled the last few weeks. So, here we go. Now I'm going to open up a new document and I'm also going to open up the old document we had and have them side by side. And to the right here, we have all the rough draft and pre-writing stuff we put together. Uh, we looked at all kinds of information. And then last week, we started to get this very rough outline going. It was kind of a pre-writing outline. So I'm going to start to compile this into more of an essay form. Um, or even a more formal outline form would be fine because this was very, very rough. And we will start with, and I just like to use simple numbers. I don't get all into that Roman numeral stuff. And I know we said unicorns have been the subject of fascination throughout the ages. I still really like that sentence, so I'm going to keep it. Unicorns have been the subject of fascination throughout the ages. And in the 1800s, or in the 1800s, in the 1980s, <laughs> Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus claimed to have the only living unicorn in existence, but what makes up a unicorn? Um, a unicorn is a mythical creature known for their beauty, their magical horns, and um, they've been discussed since biblical times. So you saw I kind of slowed down because I was like, man, the flow of that intro paragraph from our pre-writing doesn't, um, it just doesn't flow great. So I know the Ringling Brothers part, it's not necessarily the hook that I want. Um, and I can just feel that as I read it. So I'm definitely going to still talk about that. But I've said unicorns are the subject of fascination throughout the ages. Um, and then I'm just going to go right into what they are. A unicorn is a mythical creature known for their beauty, their magical horns. Now I have this sentence and have been discussed since biblical times. This is really awkward. It was fine for a pre-writing, um, but I don't feel like it ties all together. But what if I said their magical corns and have been the subject of fascination since biblical times. Now this is really interesting because I've kind of repeated this sentence into the thesis so I'm going to get rid of it. But now I have a thesis that I really, really like. It guides the paper a lot easier. And I didn't necessarily come up with this thesis right off the bat, did I? I actually had to type stuff out. I kind of had to pre-write. I had to write it down. I had to look at it a different way. And this is the way when, I, when we talk about the writing process, it's not pretty and perfect. You have to kind of muddle through this. So now I have this really tight thesis. And I'll say, did you know a unicorn was alive in present day? And I'll ask it like a question. Ringling Brothers and Barnum Mum. Maybe I'll get the spelling right this time. Doesn't look like it. Bailey. circus um, possessed such an animal in the 1980s. So now I've kind of found a place to work this sentence in and it's kind of a hook and then I still really like this really basic transition in order to better understand the legend of the unicorn one must look in greater detail. And so I'm going to take it in its entirety 
This is why you notice sometimes I just type it, see if it's easier to copy and paste some days. So, that's kind of paragraph one. And we'll, we'll see if they even know what I'm talking about when I say Barnum. Maybe it's just Barnum Circus. I don't know. I'll check that out later. So, I don't think so. Oh, sorry. I forgot to mute the other teachers today. They're letting us know that there's some technological issues going on. So now you've seen how I've rewritten that first paragraph. Now I'll go into the second paragraph. Unicorns were said to be a beautiful creature. They were described as a white horse with a white mane and tail and white silver or gold horn. They also had feathers on their legs. So I'll say a white horse with long, I'll describe it the way it looks, feathery hair on their legs with a white mane and tail and white silver or gold horn. When I remember we had read maybe a rainbow horn, so I could say rainbow or gold horn. Um, Sometimes it was said that only a virgin girl could see them and the rest of the world would see just a plain white horse. So that was something that I learned in our research. Um, oh, and we would say they had cloven feet. They had feathery hair on their legs with cloven goat-like hooves. So there's our second paragraph. We can go to our third paragraph. Um, specifically then we are talking about their magical horns. The magical horn in fact as a transition I'm going back of course their horn is the key feature that sets them apart. Now see this is a transition to where I'm going to start talking about their magical horn. Uh, the magical horn has been described in several colors. Um, the horn was said to purify waters simply by touching it. say other creatures like to live in forests with unicorns because the water was always clean. So that was why sometimes hunters, if you watch the movie The Last Unicorn, it opens with hunters who are in a forest and they are trying to find, you know, game like stags and they can't find any stags in the forest because there are not enough unicorns left uh, to keep the waters clean. And they're talking to the last unicorn and so she goes on a mission to find the other unicorns. And so that's a very famous book. Uh, we can talk about that maybe a little bit in the next paragraph. We won't even um, get into that too much. So we'll say other creatures like to live in the forest with unicorns because the water was always clean. Um, their horns 
when separated from the beast could be ground up to nullify poisons and make medicines. The unicorn also used its horn as a protective weapon in the event of being hunted. So that last sentence becomes rather transitional because I remember we looked at some tapestries and if you had explored the unicorn tapestries a little bit further you'd find out it was actually called the hunt of the unicorn and the unicorn is uh, trapped and hunted but it spears a few of the dogs and horses before they take it down. So I could say in the famous unicorn tapestries a unicorn is hunted for its horn and protects itself um, lethally against dogs and horses. The unicorn is also celebrated in works, I'll just say in um, oh no, I'll say in various fictional works like The Last Unicorn, The Magical Beast is also referenced in the Bible. Um, we already talked about how only a virgin could capture a unicorn, so I won't use that information. Um, we can because a lot of people do like to in the Bible because it is a famous work, the primary resource. Um, comparisons show the unicorn to be like the Virgin Mary. We've talked about how they use their horn to take away poison already. Um, and there is a battle between an elephant and a unicorn. So now we are going to get to our conclusion. We didn't quite get there last week, but one of the things that we know we could do is basically just summarize the ideas that we've had. So I'll say, in conclusion, the unicorn has been um, renowned, that's a good word to use, as a myth since the dawns of man, really, since the dawns of man. Um, while Circuses may have engineered a goat to look like a unicorn. There has been <laughs> no confirmed sightings any time <laughs> in the present day. So that kind of explains the myth of your hook up top, and that was kind of a nice way to tie back. Um, you say, wow, it is wonderful to think such a beast existed. It was more likely that rhinos and narwhals were the source of the legend. Um, however, the panda was 
up on to be a myth prior to confirmed discovery. So I guess you never know. So that's kind of a fun way to wrap up the paper. I would still call this a rough draft one because we haven't really gotten our, our work cited together. We want to make sure that this work is our own. We want to make sure that we have some friends read it. So between now and next week, I will definitely have some friends read this. I'll take care of what these blue lines you see is called writing in the passive voice. And that's something that I do all the time. And it is a bad habit, but because it's in a rough draft, I don't worry about it that much. So for this week, I'm going to go ahead and I've got to save this. We're going to save this as, well, not until I tap twice on here. I'm going to do Unicorn 2. Make sure I save this before I close her down. And find myself where I pulled myself off screen. Oh my gosh, haha, ha, I didn't know that happened. Let's see how I flip myself. <laughs> You know, I would love to like rough draft this out, but I'm not going to do that because I think it's so funny. I'm sure I flipped this box when I was moving it around. Anyway, I guess this heat has got me topsy-turvy, um, but that is how far we've come on our unicorn paper. And until next week, I hope you guys stay cool and get a lot of work done. Take care. Bye.